All right, welcome back. Now's for the exciting task of finding a sum and then evaluating the limit. So they're gonna smash them together. So you have to evaluate the, the limit as n goes off to infinity of this sum here. So the, the n, that's the stopping number. So it's the stopping number that's gonna shoot off uh, to infinity. So what you can do, so you don't get so bogged down in the notation, is we're just gonna work with the sum just on its own. Uh, so that way you don't have to keep putting that limit notation all the way down. So just work with that sum, whoops, just on its own. And then once we figure out what the sum is, then we can finally take the limit of your result. Okay, so this is where your formulas are gonna come into play, uh, as well as the properties. So it's i, that's the variable. So anything that is not an i, uh, you can factor that out. So I'm gonna pull off the 16 over n squared. And I'm left with just the i on the inside. So I have the 16 over n squared and then times, and then I can use my summation formulas. So I'm summing up just i. So that formula was n times n plus 1 all over 2. And I'm going to simplify this or uh, expand this out. just going to multiply everything out. You don't need to reduce it if you don't want to. You totally can if you do. Um, I usually just kind of just multiply it out. So 16n squared plus 16n all over 2n squared. So these are usually going to reduce down somewhat. Uh, but again, you don't have to because this isn't your answer. This is the sum. Well, now that you have the sum, now you can do the limit of that result. And once you do the limit, that's when you can really worry about trying to reduce it. Otherwise, some people just get stuck. They want to reduce and then try to do the limit and things start to happen. So just kind of, if you want, you can wait. Because uh, if we evaluate this as n goes off to infinity, you've got equal degrees on the top and the bottom. So that is going to equal just 16 over 2 or... 8, which is really trippy. You just added up an infinite amount of things, and the sum came out to 8. Isn't that neat? <laughs> okay, uh, part B, we'll start it uh, just to give you an idea, but part B is really similar. If we just worked with the sum, oops. Wow, don't know what happened there. Uh, for this one, um, let's just multiply it together. So 4i over n squared. And now I'm going to pull off 4 over n squared. And then you've got the sum from 1 to n of just the i. So the process is going to be practically identical to this one. It's just now instead of a 16, it's a 4. Uh, so I'll let you guys look at that one on, uh, on the online notes. And let's move on. Okay, so the definition of the area of a region in the plane. So this is the, the big stuff. So let F be continuous and non-negative on the interval from A to B. So that means F, no jumps, skips, vertical asymptotes, uh, and it's above the x-axis. The area of the region bounded by the graph of F, the x-axis itself, and then between x equals A and x equals B is this it's practically that same notation that we just did it's the limit as n goes off to infinity of the sum from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x so let's kind of break this down just a little bit 
because remember, we're adding up the area of an infinite amount of rectangles. So this sum is taking that into consideration. The sum is doing, it's adding up all the areas of the rectangles. So what's the formula for the area of a rectangle? It's base times height. So in here, inside the sum, you've got some sort of a base happening and you've got some sort of a height happening. So the delta x, that is actually the width or the base of each rectangle. Because remember, if you looked at the bases, they all went along the x axis. So it's the change in the x or the delta x that's giving you the width. This f of c sub i, that's going to generate each height for your rectangle. Because remember, you had to plug a number into the function to actually give you the height of your rectangle. So we've got the height times the width uh, of each of those rectangles you're going to add them up and then we're going to let n go off to infinity because now you have an infinite amount of rectangles. So your delta x, you can actually calculate what it is. Uh, it's just b minus a over n. And then the c sub i, the number that you're plugging into uh, the, the function itself, is going to follow this little formula here, a plus i delta x. So with these, they're going to tell you to, or your instructions are going to be really similar. Just use the limit process, so like what we just did in the previous example, to find the area of the region between the graph of the function and the x-axis over the given interval. It's not going to distinguish between, you know, are you using an upper sum or are you using a lower sum? It doesn't matter. They're going to, it doesn't matter which one you use, it's going to come out to the same thing because you're smashing an infinite amount of rectangles in there. So you don't have to worry about is, you know, well, which one is it? Just follow this process and you can never go wrong. All right, so we're gonna try this from y equals x to the third, uh, going from x equals zero to x equals one. So let's draw it out. So x to the third, Looks like that. And we're gonna go from zero all the way over to one. And we're looking at the area of the region that's from zero to one and trapped between the curve and the x-axis. So it's this like curvy triangle thing. So what I do is I go ahead and get my delta x so b minus a over n, so the b is 1, a is 0, and n is n. So your delta x comes out to 1 over n. And then your c sub i, that's a plus i delta x, so 0 plus i times 1 over n, which is going to be i over n. So my area is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum uh, from i equals 1 to n of f of c sub i times a delta x. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have. We're going to plug in the c sub i. So i over n. And then the delta x, I'll stick that in there too, and that's 1 over n. Okay, so, oh, someone sounds unhappy. So let's do the sum first. Okay, so this f of i sub n, you know, it's the same 
thing is what we've always done. If you want to evaluate a, this thing, you take whatever's inside the parentheses and you plug it into the function. Whether it's a number, whether they're letters, you don't care. It's always the same thing. So I'm going to take i over n. I'm going to stick it in for x. And I end up with i to the third over n to the third. And I still have 1 over n. Uh, right there. Okay, so let's keep going. So if I multiply the ends together, that's n to the fourth, and I can pull that out to the front. And I'm left with just the i to the third on the inside. So I have 1 over n to the fourth hanging out front. And then I'll use the formula for i to the third, which is n squared times n plus 1 squared, all over 4. And then if I multiply all that out, n to the fourth plus 2n to the third plus n squared over 4n to the fourth. So this is your sum. So don't stop there, now you have to do the limit. So the limit of that fraction is n goes off to infinity. Your degrees on the top and the bottom are equal, so it's the ratio of the leading coefficients. So it equals a fourth, and that is your area. So the area of this green section comes out to one fourth. Okay, so I'll leave the next example for you guys to look at. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please contact me. Um, don't get discouraged if you're going, what on earth is happening? Just keep working at it. You are not alone in this. This is not easy stuff. Uh, it does take some practice. Uh, and not everyone gets this the first time they see it. In fact, most people don't. So you just got to review and keep working on it and you just keep asking questions. All right. So thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next time.